Hey guys, it's Leah B from Prestige Veteran Medical Consulting. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, physician assistant, and former compensation and pension examiner. Today, I want to come on and discuss Camp Lejeune and some of the presumptive conditions that are considered to be related to exposures for veterans that were um, that served in those lo in that location. So, first off, I want to talk about the background of Camp Lejeune. So, I have a little write up that I use in a lot of the reports that I that I do. They're unrelated to presumptive conditions, and that um, write up is that the toxic chemicals found at Camp Lejeune are known as volatile organic compounds and are contained in products to include many dry cleaning solvents and degreasers. A nearby dry cleaning company was using these solvents and those toxins contaminated the groundwater in the area. There were also industrial spills and waste disposal sites in the surrounding area that contributed to the contamination. According to the Agency for Toxic Substance and Disease Registry, these contaminants in the in on-base water wells surpassed the Environmental Protection Agency's set limits. The water well contamination was first discovered in 1982, but had been present in the drinking water for many years, and it took three more years before the wells were finally shut down. Among those toxins were additional classes of chemicals such as tetrachloroethylene, also known as uh, perfluorethylene, trichloroethylene, which is TCE. A lot of you guys might um, have heard of that. Benzene, vinyl chloride, and DCE. These hazardous chemicals have been linked to several debilitating health conditions, and specifically TCE and PCE have been linked to a variety of cancers. Uh, there is an article titled Studies of Camp Lejeune Population published in 2009 um, that discusses contaminated water supplies at Camp Lejeune and potential health effects. That's a good one to check out if you guys haven't. Um, trichloroethylene cancer epidemiology, a consideration and of select issues published in the Environmental Health Protect um, Perspectives in 2006 discusses a lot of those risks from the TCE exposure as well. So I want to jump over to VA.gov, and I'm going to pull up a fact sheet for you guys. Um, hang on one second. So VA.gov has a ton of fact sheets and different um, informational pages that I think are really wonderful and get really down into the point of a lot of the issues that really speak in that down and dirty language so that veterans can sort of understand the, the basic principles. It's always good to discuss your case with a accredited legal professional like a VSO, a accredited claims agent or an attorney to get more advice and legal strategy on what may, may or may not pertain to you. But like I said, VA.gov has some good information here. So, um, Camp Lejeune water contamination health issues. If you served at either of these locations between August 1st, 1953 and December 31st, 1987, you may be eligible for disability and health care benefits, either at Camp Lejeune or Marine Corps Air Station, New River, North Carolina. So what is a presumptive condition? So a presumptive condition is defined here to get the VA disability rating, your disability must connect to your military service. For many health conditions, you need to prove that your service caused the condition. But for some conditions, we automatically assume or presume that your service caused the condition. We call these presumptive conditions. Presumptive conditions are established by law or regulation. If you have a presumptive condition, you don't need to prove that your service caused the condition. You only need to meet the service requirements for the presumption. So what are some of those conditions? Okay. So right now it says, you may be eligible for disability compensation payments on a presumptive basis if you meet all of these requirements. These requirements apply to veterans, reservists, and National Guard members. So you had to have served at Camp Lejeune or the location in New River, North Carolina for at least 30 days between August 1st, 1953 and December 31st, 1987, like I mentioned, and you should not have had a dishonorable discharge when you separated from the military. So one of the following diagnoses are considered presumptive, you can have more than one of the following, but here's the list. So leukemia, adult leukemia, aplastic anemia, and other myelodysplastic syndromes, bladder cancer, kidney cancer, liver cancer, multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and Parkinson's disease. Evidence shows a link between these conditions and exposures to chemicals found in the drinking water at Camp Lejeune and MCAS New River during that time. So there's, there's some other information here too that it says that if you have some of these conditions, you might be eligible to um, enroll in VA healthcare and you don't have to pay copay, copays for them. 
So these are other disabilities that have been found closely connected. So breast cancer, bladder cancer, esophageal cancer, the list goes on and on. Also, presumptive conditions are important. I'm going to jump off this screen share here. So presumptive conditions are important, but that's not the end all be all list. You can also, there is evidence that supports other medical conditions being, being related to those exposures as well. You just have to show that it's not necessarily presumptive, but that perhaps you don't have a slew of other risk factors. Like I see a lot of prostate cancer being related. So it's, it may not be on the presumptive list, but if they don't have a lot of risk factors, there is research to support a connection there in, in many cases as well. So I hope this was helpful for a lot of you guys. Please drop some comments and let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thank you for watching.